Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Unify Traffic Management. We'll be looking at the rules and the route. I have done a video about traffic management in the past, but we're gonna go a little more in depth and I'll tell you some of the quirkiness with traffic management. If you're new here and like to support my channel, please hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit MacTelecomNetworks.com. And I do have affiliate links down in the description below. Before we get to creating any rules or routes, let's take a look at what we'll be doing. So over here, I have two different internet services. I have a primary and then I have a secondary. So WAN 1 and WAN 2. What we're going to do, we'll have a student network, which I've already created. And with that student network, we're going to block out social media. We're going to also have a guest network where we're going to do a speed limit. This will be a speed limit on the wire and on the Wi-Fi. Next, we have a camera network and say we don't want this camera network going out to the internet at all. So we're going to block it from having internet access. Not shown on this topology, we'll have an IoT network, which we're going to end up blocking all inner VLAN routing for. And we also have a staff network. So that staff network will have inner VLAN routing blocked, but it will be able to get to my Synology NAS. And that's where the quirkiness comes in. And I will show you that once we get to it. So let's start out with the student network and blocking out social media. The first thing you need to do, you need to log into your Unify OS console and then click on settings. From there, we're going to go to traffic management. And this time we're going to be creating rules. And you could see me sitting there behind the computer creating some rules. At the top of the traffic management, it says choose the domains, ports, and applications that can be accessed on your network and specify how often, and they do show a little example to make it easier for you. So what we're gonna wanna do for this first rule is to block out social media to our student network. So the action that we're gonna take is to block and the category is gonna be app. We can also specify a couple different things. We have app group, domain name, IP address, region, internet, and then local network. If we click on app group, it will allow us to specify if we wanna have social networks, online games, instant messenger, peer-to-peer, -peer, so on and so forth. I'm just gonna select app because underneath the social network app group, it doesn't tell you what it is blocking. And we're just gonna pick a few different applications. So first I'm gonna choose TikTok. We'll do Facebook and then we'll also do Instagram. I believe TikTok only shows up under Unify OS 3.0. So if you're running Unify OS 2.0, you probably won't see TikTok yet. Now, if we scroll under target, this is where we're gonna tell it which network we want this rule to run on. So I'll click on the target and we'll scroll down and we'll be picking our students. They do have schedules that you could run. So if you wanted to allow the students to go onto social media, maybe during a lunch break, you could set a custom schedule for that. I'm just gonna allow this to always run and then add the rule. This computer is sitting on the default network. I'm gonna switch it over to the student network and see if we could get to Facebook and Instagram. I've opened up a new Chrome window. Let's see if we could get to Facebook and I am on the student network. And as you could tell, the wheel is just spinning. So that's gonna time out. Let's see if we could get to Instagram. Same thing's happening with Instagram. And the last one we'll try is TikTok. The rule that we created is working as we would expect. So now let's move on to the guest and make them have a speed limit. Now back under traffic management, we need to create a new rule. Here we're gonna select speed limit and then under our category, it's gonna be internet. We're gonna give them the download speed of 10 down by two up. Under our target, this is where we could select a full subnet or an individual device. We're gonna select the guest network. So we'll scroll down, find our guest network and then select it. We could also do that schedule, but we won't add that. And then we'll add the rule. And this speed limit is really nice because it does both our wired and our wireless networks. I am on the guest network plugged hardwired in. Let's see what speeds I'm getting. Okay, and I'm getting 9.69 down by 1.85 up. And that's pretty close to what we set that limit to. So this is working really well. The next thing we need to do is block out our camera network from accessing the internet. Again, we're under traffic management and we wanna create a new rule. The action this time is gonna be able to block and the category is gonna be internet. Our target is gonna be our camera network. I just have a camera test network set up, so we'll select that. I'm always gonna have this on and then we're gonna add the rule. So I'll switch this computer to that camera test network and we shouldn't be able to reach the internet. This computer is now on the internet and we could verify that it's getting an IP address by going IP config. And we could see we're getting 192.168.4.195, which is in that camera test network. You'd also see that network is offline under unify.ui.com. Let's try to ping google.ca. And you can see that the requests are timing out. So this network has no internet access 
which is what we wanted to do. We've already covered quite a bit with our traffic management. So now let's block out inner VLAN routing for the IoT network. Again, we're gonna create a new rule and this time it's gonna be block and then it's gonna be our local network. The local network is gonna be our IoT network. Under traffic direction, we're gonna select traffic from all local networks. And then our target, we're gonna select every network that we don't want the IoT to reach. So we'll select the device, we'll click default, we'll do camera, we'll do staff, VoIP, Nord, camera test, and student and guest. So now we can't get to any network besides its own in the internet, and then we'll add the rule. Next up, we wanna do that for our staff network. So we're gonna create a new rule. It's gonna be the exact same thing. We're gonna be blocking, and then it's gonna be local network. The local network, our staff, and then our traffic direction will be traffic from all local networks. The target is gonna be every other network besides the staff network, and then we're gonna add the rule. My computer's now on the staff network, and if we try to ping my Synology NAS, the request won't go through. So these are just gonna time out, and this is where the quirkiness happens. So we want to make sure that our staff could get to my Synology NAS, so we would wanna put in allow rule. And how this traffic management works, it should just reorder the rules automatically for you, but it doesn't work. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna create a new rule. We're gonna allow it this time, and it's gonna be a local network. The local network will be our staff network. This time the direction is gonna be traffic to all local networks, and then we're gonna select my Mac Telecom NAS from the list. So if I just type in Mac Telecom NAS, you're seeing the IP of 192.168.10.220. We're always gonna want that on and we'll add the rule. So even after adding the rule, we still can't hit my Synology NAS. It's not going through. This is where it's falling a bit behind. I believe it's just a bug because traffic management is supposed to order it for you. There is no way where I could drag and drop that allow above the blocking rule like in our firewall rules. I'll show you how you could get around that, but you have to think about your rules first because we want all the allow rules at the top. So I'm gonna create a new rule. It will be to allow and it's going to be a local network. The local network will be my staff network. And then the traffic direction will be traffic to all local networks and we'll search up my Synology NAS again. We're going to have it always on and then we'll add the rule. So this rule was added first. Now let's block out inner VLAN routing. And just to show you that the Synology is able to be pinged, let's do it right now. So you can see the requests are going through. So let's block inner VLAN routing for our staff network. We'll create a new rule. This time it will be to block local network and then we'll click on our staff. The traffic direction is gonna be traffic from local networks. And then we're gonna select all the other networks. So default IOT, camera, VoIP, Nord, camera test, student and guest. And then we're gonna add the rule. So now if I ping my Synology NAS, it's still going through even though we have that blocking rule. Let's look at another device that's on that default network. My PDU Pro is on 10.142, so I'm gonna click and try to ping it. You can see that that request is failing, but we still are able to get to our NAS. So you need to think about your rule order until they get this fixed. You could also block out websites. I'm not gonna show you how to do that, but it's fairly simple to do. You just block out the domain. So the next thing we'll look at quickly is traffic route. So we're gonna create a new route. We're gonna have it for all traffic and we're gonna push my VoIP network out WAN2. So I'm gonna select my target of VoIP. And then the interface is gonna be my WAN2 and then we'll add route. Now, every time I pick up my phone, it's gonna go out WAN2. I've done another video on routing all network traffic through a privacy VPN like ExpressVPN or NordVPN and you would do it the same way. We'd create a new route we would do all traffic, and then we would select the network that we want to go over that VPN. Let's just say our IoT network. From here, I've already created that open VPN client, and you could see down here, I just called it PS5, but every time somebody connects to the IoT network, it would go through that open VPN client. We could also do it by specific traffic. So if we want a domain name, say MacTelecomNetworks.com, to always go through WAN2, we could set that. And that's gonna be it for this video on the Unify traffic management. And I really do like how they've implemented this besides those few issues that I've had. It makes doing firewall rules and blocking inner VLAN routing a lot better and easier to understand for people who don't know firewalls too well. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of Unify traffic management. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.